हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू द बेसिक इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स मॉड्यूल इन लास्ट लेक्चर वी कवर्ड द बेसिक्स ऑफ रेजिस्टर्स डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ रेजिस्टर्स इट सीरीज इन पैरेलल कनेक्शन एंड डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ रेजिस्टर्स नाउ इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द कैपेसिटर्स देयर टाइप्स देयर डिफरेंट कनेक्शन एंड अबाउट इंडक्टर्स देयर टाइप्स द एप्लीकेशन एंड द डिफरेंट कनेक्शन मैन सीरीज एंड पैरल सो आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस लेक्चर इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल बी कवरिंग कैपेसिटर्स एंड इंडक्टर्स मीन्स देयर बेजिक्स देर ऐसे यूनिट्स देर फॉर्मूलाज देर डिफरेंट टाइप्स एंड द कनेक्शंस सो दिस इज आर टेबल ऑफ कंटेंट मीन्स इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल बी कवरिंग द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ कपैसिटर वॉट इज कपैसिटर एस आई यूनिट एंड सिम्बॉल सीरीज एंड पैरल कनेक्शन देन वी विल सी डिफरेंट टाइप्स एंड एप्लीकेशन ऑफ कैपेसिटर्स देन इंडक्टर्स मीन्स वॉट इज इंडक्टर एस आई यूनिट सिम्बॉल सीरीज एंड पैरल कनेक्शन ऑफ इंडक्टर्स एंड देन इन द लास्ट वी विल सी टाइप्स एंड एप्लीकेशन ऑफ द इंडक्टर्स सो लेट स्टार्ट विद आर वेरी फर्स्ट टॉपिक विच इज कैपेसिटर्स हियर इन दिस सेक्शन यू विल लर्न वॉट इज कैपेसिटर इट्स एस आई यूनिट सिम्बॉल सीरीज एंड पैरल कनेक्शन ऑफ दैम सो द फ्लो ऑफ दिस सेक्शन वुड बी फर्स्ट वी विल सी द डेफिनेशन then si unit and symbol then how capacitor works and how the series and parallel connections are made and their formulas so first of all what is capacitor so as we discussed in previous lectures that a capacitor is a passive components is one of the many passive components so a capacitor is a two terminal electrical device that can store energy in the form of an electric charge so the basic of capacitor or you can say the basic necessity or the base work of capacitor is to store electrical energy so this is the uh, uh, main uh, mainly used uh, purpose of capacitor so they are they are storing electrical uh, charge so they are used to store energy in the form of electric charge it consists of two electrical conductors that are separated by a distance so in a capacitor basically what you will see there are two different conductors or you can say parallel plates and these both the plates are separated by a distance a specific distance the space between the conductors may be filled by vacuum or with an insulating material known as dielectric so there are two parallel plates and in between them there is a medium and that medium is known as dielectric medium so in this medium or you can say this dielectric medium is filled may be filled by sometimes vacuum or sometimes with an insulating material depending upon the type of capacitor which you are using so the this medium dielectric mediums may differ in different types of capacitors the ability of the capacitor to store charges is known as capacitance so what is capacitance capacitance is the ability of capacitors to store electric charges is nothing but a capacitance so this was the basic definition of capacitor so capacitors are used to store energy in the form of electric charge and the ability to store the charge is known as capacitance so what is capacitance you know now what is the si unit and symbol of it so the si unit of capacitor is farad so farad stands for capacitor and it is denoted by capital f so as you can see si unit is farad and it is denoted by f but this farad is large unit for practical task hence this capacitance is usually measured in the sub units of farads such as microfarad or picofarad so as you can see in see in the table below there are different uh, different sub units of farads from first it is 1 mf which is millifarad so 1 millifarad is equals to 10 is to minus 3 farad One microfarad is equals to ten is to minus six farad. 
while 1 nanofarad is equals to 10 to minus 9 farad and 1 picofarad is equals to 10 to minus 12 farad. So this is the simplification of 1 milli, micro, nano and picofarad. And capacitance is denoted by capital C. Now after seeing capacitance and its as a unit, let's see its formula. That what is the formula of capacitance? As we all know, the charge is every time proportional to the potential difference between the two points. So Q is always proportional to the potential difference. So Q is proportional to V. Now what is capacitance? So capacitance is the ratio of change in electric charge of a system to the corresponding change in its potential. So C would be equal to charge, change in charge which is Q. Charge is always measured in coulombs. So Q divided by the corresponding change in its electric potential. So C would be equal to Q by V. But how do we get this is the conducting plates have some charges Q1 and Q2. Usually the first plate has positive charge and the other one has negative. The electric field in the region between the plates depends on the charge given to the conducting plates. We also know that potential difference V is directly proportional to the electric field. So Q is proportional to V and this proportionality constant is nothing but capacitance. So Q is equal to C into V, right? So Q would be equal to how much? Q would be equal to C into V. Where Q is coulombs, Q in coulombs, C in farad and V in volts. So this constant of proportionality is known as capacitance of the capacitor. So, so capacitance will be equal to charge divided by volt. So this is the simplified pyramid of Q, C and V which is Q. Q is charge in coulombs, C is capacitance in farad and V is the voltage or potential difference in volts. So this is a pyramid for you to remember these equations. This equation C is equals to Q by V, C is equals to Q by C and charge Q is equals to C into V. So in this you can see C if you, if you put is equals to here then C would be equal to Q by V while V would be equal to Q by C and Q would be equal to the multiplication of this both C into V. Q is equals to CV. So this is nothing but a simplified pyramid. Now what about parallel plate capacitance? So parallel plate capacitance is nothing but it is a basic and constructive formula to find capacitance when it is give uh, when the distance and area of these parallel plates are given then using this equation you can find the capacitance so the capacitance of parallel plate would be equal to a epsilon 0 divided by d this is the basic formula and popularly used in some in sums to find the capacitance so c would be equal to a epsilon 0 divided by d. So from this equation it is clear that the capacitance of a capacitor depends upon area of parallel plate epsilon 0 is permittivity and d is distance between both the plates. So c is depended upon all of these three quantities. So how it would be affect the capacitance so C is proportional, the capacitance is proportional to A and epsilon while it is inversely proportional to the distance between them. So C is proportional to area of parallel plates while it is inversely proportional to the distance between them. So whenever you want to increase the capacitance then you will have to go with the uh, with the maximum area of plate and if you want to reduce the capacitance then you will have to uh, you will have to decrease the distance between both the plates so here c is capacitance 
A is area of parallel plate. Epsilon 0 is permittivity and D is the distance between both the parallel plate. So this is how you can find the capacitance of a capacitor by putting the value of area of plate, permittivity's value and distance between them. Now, after seeing the formula, we will see the different connections of capacitors. What happens when capacitors are connected in series and what happens when capacitors are connected in parallel? So first, this is the capacitors in series. So uh, in the previous lecture, we have seen uh, the resistors connected in series. So in series, always there are uh, there are only there is only one common node. While in parallel, there are more than two or minimum two common nodes. So here, both the capacitors, this capacitor C1 and this capacitor C2. Now, first of all, uh, what is cup, uh, what is this? So this is the symbolic representation. We have seen in the previous lecture that this is nothing but the schematic representation of capacitors. So this is how capacitors are denoted or are represented in socket. So in circuit, whenever there are uh, two plates like this, you will denote them uh, as a capacitor. And C1 is nothing but capa capacitor 1. C2 is capacitor 2. And in between, there are many capacitors. Then this is Cn-1, which is the capacitor n minus 1 and this is the last capacitor now you can see in this figure that each and every each and every capacitor share the common node with previous one or the letter one so c1 and c2 are connected with each other with sharing this node means the last terminal of c1 is connected to the starting terminal of C2. So this is series connection. So what happens when capacitors are connected in series? So when capacitors are connected in series, the total or effective capacitance of the circuits decreases. Inverse of resistors. In resistors, the resistance of a series connection increases while for capacitors the capacitance of total circuit gets decreased when they are connected in series. So uh, the formula for resistor in parallel is equals to the formula for the capacitance in series. So uh, the total capacitance of the circuit will be it would be equal to inverse of the C total would be equal to the inverse of individual sum of inverse capacitance. So C1 by C total would be equal to 1 by C1 plus 1 by C2 plus up to up to 1 by Cn minus 1 plus 1 by Cn. So when capacitors are connected in series, the total capacitance decreases and total capacitance is inverse of sum of individual inverse sum. Now this is the parallel connection of capacitors. So as you can see in parallel connection there are more than two common nodes. So here C1 and C2 both are connected with more than two common nodes. See here this is the common node and this is also a common node between C1 and C2. So this is how you can say this is a parallel connection. So in parallel connection what happens? So the total capacitance of a circuit increases. When capacitors are connected in parallel, the total capacitance of circuit increases. So the formula for total capacitance would be equal to individual sums or you can say algebraic sum of individual capacitance. So C total would be equal to C1 plus C2 plus up to up to plus C n minus 1 plus C n. So when capacitors are connected in parallel, the capacitance increases. And the total capacitance is the algebraic sum of n number of capacitors. After seeing the formula, we will see the different types and applications of capacitors. 
Now capacitors have variety of different types uh, depending upon their size, depending upon the medium used in dielectric, depending upon the medium used to form capacitor and depending upon the value of capacitor. So we can mainly uh, divide them in two types. The one is fixed capacitor while second is variable capacitors. As both the names suggest in fixed capacitor, the value of capacitance would be stay constant. While in variable capacitors, you will be able to change the value of capacitance. Now, this is the types of capacitor depending upon the medium. So, these are the tantalum capacitors, these are aluminum capacitors, these are ceramic capacitors, these are thin film and these are trimmer. So, this uh, type is divided, uh, divided by the me uh, material used to form a capacitor. So, these are formed by aluminum, these are formed by ceramics, these are formed by a thin film. So, this is how they are divided in a different type. So, these are some types of them which are ceramic capacitors, film capacitors, powder film uh, capacitors, electrolytic capacitors, see, uh, film capacitors, paper capacitors. So, these are the some types of capacitors. Now, we will see the applications where the capacitors are used. So, main, mainly you can divide the application area of capacitors in four types, which are as an energy storage, as a sensor, for power conditioning and to process a signal. So, in uh, uh, when we are using a capacitor as a storage to store energy, so they are used to store electrical energy. And so, but individual capacitors they do not hold much energy. But whenever there is a case when additional power is required or temporary power outages happens, then there are capacitors. Uh, comes into the picture and they provide temporary power and uh, uh, and also used as additional power source. Many applications use capacitors as energy sources and a few of them are audio equipments, camera flashes, power supplies, magnetic coils and lasers. So these are the application area of capacitor as a storage unit. Now one of the more, uh, more important application is capacitors to condition power. Now, capacitors uh, have uh, one ability or you can say it has a quality which is uh, to block DC signals and to pass or uh, to allow to flow only AC signals. And uh, due to this ability or quality, they are used to condition the power. So, capacitors allow only AC signals to pass when they are charged and block DC signals. This capacitor effect is used in separating or decoupling different parts of electrical circuits to reduce noise. So, whenever you want to reduce noise, you can use capacitors. And due to a reduction in noise, the uh, efficiency is improved. So, you can use a capacitor to reduce a noise and as a result, you can have improved efficiency. Capacitors are also used in utility substation to counterattack uh, inductive loading introduced by transmission lines. So, these are two types. Uh, first is store as in storage or to store electrical energy and second is Second is to condition power by blocking DC and allowing only AC signals to pass through them. Now the another application is to use a capacitor as a sensor or as a sensor to measure different variety of things. So capacitors are used as a sensor to measure variety of things like humidity, mechanical strain and fuel levels. 
now capacity in capacitors there are two parallel plates and there is a distance between them which is separated by a material you can say a dielectric medium so these two aspects are used for sensing equipment are used as a sensing equipment so two aspect of capacitor constraints are used in sensing application which are the distance between the parallel plates and the medium between them the medium we have used as a dielectric medium the former means the distance distance between the parallel plates are used to detect mechanical changes such as acceleration and pressure while the latter which is the material used between the parallel plates is used to sense air humidity so these are the application type in which capacitors are used as the sensors so the distance between a capacitors are used to measure acceleration or pressure and the medium between the capacitors are used to sense air humidity so this is how you can use a capacitor as a sensor now the another advanced application is to uh, is used by dynamic random access memory devices to represent binary information as bits this is advanced application of capacitor in information technology capacitors are also used in conjunction with the inductors to tune circuits to particular frequency and effect exploited by radio receivers speakers analog equalizers so let's move forward with inductors so here in this section you will learn what is inductor it's a si unit symbol series and parallel connection of them so let's see what is inductor now flow of the section would be first the definition of inductor then after si unit and symbol then how does inductor work then series and parallel connection of these inductors so first of all what is an inductor so as we know that uh, uh, inductor also is a passive component is one of the many passive components and it is used to store energy in the form of magnetic field capacitor uh, stores energy in the form of electric charge while an inductor stores energy in the form of magnetic energy so an inductor is a passive component that is used to store energy in the form of magnetic energy when electricity is applied to it so basically the formation of uh, inductor is something like there is a medium or a core and around which around which there is a coil bounded onto it so there is a core and onto this core a uh, wire is wound now there are different uh, types of cores and according to that uh, there are different types of uh, this inductors are available now one of the key properties of an inductor is that it impedes or opposes any change in the amount of current flowing through it so this is the nature of inductor uh, these inductors opposes the change in current flowing through it whenever current across the inductor changes it either acquires charge means it um, it uh, gains a charge or loses a charge in order to compensate or equalize the current passing through it so in order to maintain current passing through it it acquires a charge or it loses a charge to maintain the current passing through it the inductor is also called a choke reactor or just a coil so in short an inductor is a passive component but it is used to store energy in the form of magnetic field when electricity is applied so whenever there is an electric current is applied onto the core it it pro, it uh, stores energy in the form of magnetic energy and it opposes the change in current flowing through it whenever the current flowing through it changes it acquires or loses electric charge in order to maintain the current flowing through it so the schematic symbol for different types of inductors are shown below 
the first one this is the air core inductor whenever there is an inductor uh, uh, designed by this you can refer it to as air core inductor then if there is two parallel lines after this uh, coil then it is iron cone then if there is a breakage line then it is ferrite core and if there is an arrow onto this coil then it is a variable core inductor means this means the inductance of this core you can vary so this is nothing but a coil which is wounded onto some material so this is coil and there is a core onto core there is a coil wounded and the si unit of henry of inductor is henry and it is denoted by capital h while the inductor is denoted by capital l so the inductor is uh, uh, denoted by l and its unit henry is denoted by capital h now this uh, henry unit is very large in practical use so whenever you want to measure henry or inductance of inductor you can use its sub units such as micro henry milli henry nano henry these all these all so the si unit of inductance is henry but henry is a large unit for practical tasks hence inductance sometimes measured in sub units of henry such as micro henry or milli henry so 1 micro henry is equals to 10 is to minus 3 henry 1 milli henry is equals to 10 is to minus 3 henry 1 micro henry is equals to 10 is to minus 6 henry 1 nano henry is equals to 10 is to minus 9 henry while 1 pico henry is equals to 10 is to minus 12 henry so these are the units and of a different sub units now the connection different connection of inductors what happens when inductors are connected in series and what happens when inductors are connected in parallel so as i mentioned earlier whenever there is an component there is a component connected in series means it has a common node only so uh, here as you can see from this diagram the inductor l the inductor is denoted by l1 this inductor is denoted by l2 between these two inductors there are many more inductors and this is the last uh, inductor of this network which is denoted by ln so l is in the inductor and this is its schematic representation of an inductor so these inductors are connected in series so what happens is whenever the inductors are connected in series the total inductance of the circuit increases similar to resistance so whenever the resistors are connected in series the uh, total or you can say the work uh, the circuit uh, resistance increases similarly whenever inductors are connected in series the total uh, inductance uh, of the circuit or network increases and which will be equal to the algebraic sum of individual induct uh, inductances so l series or l total will be equal to l1 plus l2 plus up to up to ln so when inductors are connected in series total inductance increases similar to resistors total inductance is algebraic sum of individual inductance of each inductor so whenever there is a requirement of increment in induct inductance so you'll have to go for series connection opposite while uh, inductors are connected in parallel the total uh, inductance or the total inductance of the circuit or network decreases so this is how a parallel connection is represented here these both inductors l1 and l2 shares two common nodes one is here and second is here so in parallel connection there are always two or more common nodes so these these are inductors this is l1 this is l2 and this is ln and they are connected in parallel so in parallel the total capacitance would be equal to inverse of summation of inverse inductance of individual inductor where l is equals to 
inductance in Henry. So whenever the inductors are connected in parallel, the inductance decreases, similar to resistor. So whenever there is an application of inductor to reduce inductance, you can use the parallel connection. Total inductance is the inverse of the sum of individual inverse of inductance. Now this is something about RLNC. So whenever a resistor in circuit, this is denoted by this schematic representation. When there is a capacitor in circuit, this is how it represented. And this is how the inductor in circuit is represented. So a uh, resistor is denoted by capital R, capacitor is denoted by capital C, and inductor is denoted by capital L. These are the basic equations for resistor, capacitor, and inductor. R is equals to V by I, Capacitance C is equals to Q by V and inductance L is equal to VL divided by DI by DT. Now whenever the resistors are connected in series, the total resistance would be equal to algebraic sum of R1, R2 and the number of resistors connected into the network. So RT will be equal to R1 plus R2. Uh, and whenever the capacitance are connected in series, the total uh, capacitance would be equal to 1 by C, T is equal to 1 by C1 plus 1 by C2 and the number of capacitance connected in network. While the inductors are connected in series, the equation would be, would be equal to as for resistors. So LT would be equal to L1 plus L2. And whenever are, they are connected in parallel, these equations are used. Now we will move forward with types and application. The last, uh, the last subtopic of our two days lecture. So we will see the different types of inductors. So inductors are majorly divided into these four types. The first one is iron core, then air core, then iron powder and ferrite core. So uh, these are the types uh, divided into category according to the core used to build a inductor. So in this iron core would be used in this air core, in this iron powder and in this type of inductors ferrite core would be used. So in iron cone inductor as the name suggests the core of this type of inductor is made of iron. These inductors are low space inductors that have high power and high inductance value. So whenever you require high inductance, you can use iron cone inductors. However, they are limited in high frequency capacities. These inductors are used in audio equipments. So iron cone inductors are used in audio equipments. Now air core inductors. As the name suggests, there is uh, no medium or there is no specific material core, there would only be air as a core. So these inductors are used when the amount of inductance required is low. So for low inductance requirements, you can use air core inductors. Since there is no core, it does not have a core loss. But the number of turns the inductor must have is more for this type when compared to the inductors with the core. So whenever there is a medium or any specific material is used as a core, the number of turns would be decreased. But in air core inductors, the number of turns should be high. Usually, ceramic inductors are often referred to as core inductors. So the ceramic inductors, you can say them as a air core inductors. The another type is ferrite core inductors. In this type of inductor, the ferrite material is used as a core. The general composition of ferrite is XFE2O4, where X represents transition material. Now, ferrites can be classified into two types, soft ferrite and hard ferrite. Means the ferrite used in core can be differ. It can be a soft ferrite or a hard ferrite. You now, the last type is iron powder inductors. In this type of inductor, the iron powder is used, which is also known as iron oxide. Now, these iron oxides are formed by very fine and insulating particles of pure iron powder. High magnetic flux can be stored in it due to the air gap. It has a good air gap, hence the high magnetic flux can be stored into it. 
द परमिएबिलिटी ऑफ दिस कोर इज वेरी लेस मीन्स दिस टाइप ऑफ कोर कंटेंट्स वेरी लो परमिटिविटी दे आर यूजली बिलो वन हंड्रेड दे आर मेनली यूज इन स्विचिंग पावर सप्लाईज सो दिस टाइप ऑफ इंडक्टर्स आर मेनली यूज इन स्विचिंग पावर सप्लाईज Now, this is choke, and choke is another type of inductor, which is uh, mainly or its main function is to block AC and allow DC. So, a choke is a type of inductor that is used mainly for blocking high frequency alternating current. Means it blocks high frequency AC in electric circuit, and it allows DC or low frequency signals to pass. as the function of this inductor is to restrict the changes in the current it is called a choke so the change in the current is blocked by choke and hence it is known as choke so the main function is this choke is to uh, uh, is to block the high frequency ac or you can say change in current so these are called as choke this inductor consists of a coil of insulated wire wound on magnetic core so uh, how this is how they made now the main difference between a choke and inductor is a choke is mainly used to block ac and pass dc while the other inductors are uh, capable of uh, storing a magnetic field when electricity passed through them now let's just discuss the different applications of these inductors so the main application area are two first is to control signal and the another one is to store energy so you can use inductors as a control to control signals and you can use an inductor as to store energy now coil in an inductor can be used to store energy but the function of inductor depends upon the frequency of the current passing through it so that is for high frequency signal so uh, inductors mainly do what they uh, they cannot uh, done or they cannot permit the high frequency ac signals so the high frequency signals will be passed less easily compared to a uh, low frequency dc signals so this function tells that it blocks ac current and passes dc current hence it can be used to block ac signals and resulting controlling signal this is how they control the signal means they block ac signal and let pass the dc signals inductors can be used along with capacitors to form lc filters so this is the very widely used application of uh, inductors and capacitor combination to form lc filters to uh, filter the unwanted ac signals and for uh, to pass uh, only continuous dc uninterrupted dc lc filters now the second one is to store energy so uh, you all you all know by far that the inductor is mainly stores energy in the form of magnetic energy the inductor stores energy in the form of magnetic energy coils can store energy in a form of magnetic energy using property that an electric uh, that an electric current flowing through a coil produces a magnetic field which in turn produces electric current in the core so this is how they store energy into them and using them you can control signal and make lc filter using capacitors with inductors so this was all about capacitors and inductors their connection different types and symbol thank you so much for today